This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. If 2020 has taught us anything, it's to take nothing for granted. So when you expect hot water and get cold, when you expect the shower to drain and it doesn't, when you turn the furnace on and it won't start, stop freaking and call Beacon Plumbing, Heating, and Mechanical. 1-800-FREAKIN. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Authorities in Groton, Connecticut say that two wild turkeys have become infamous for wandering a neighborhood, stopping traffic, and even attacking a postal worker. <laughs> what the hell's yeah. going on? These wild turkeys, man. They want to go to Connecticut. Connecticut can be a mean, mean place. This is like around where my brother lives. I got to warn him. Yeah, wow. Yeah, you better let them know, man. One resident named Deborah says that the turkeys are responsible for delaying her mail. They told us it was because the turkeys attacked one of the postal workers. Back in the end of January, we went two weeks without getting mail, and I went down there three times myself. I emailed, put in tickets, talked to somebody at Consumer Affairs, and then we finally were resumed service. Um, now here we are two weeks again later, and the same thing is happening again. Yeah. So we don't need well, to worry about Russia. We need to worry about wild turkeys yeah. is what you're telling me. That's, yeah. that's what's going on there. They're, they're, it's an incursion. All right. And they promised they would just be hanging out peacefully. Nothing, you know, but that we, you know, wild turkeys. They're, they're, you know, they're not there just for, you know, peace and love. They're, the turkey they're, incursion. <laughs> yes. It's all those years of Thanksgiving. And you think one pardon of a turkey by the president is going to, you know, make the wild turkey population love. No, they're pissed. That's yeah. what I was about to say. You know what? Thanksgiving's coming early in Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, right. If you want to mess with my mail. <laughs> Your dinner, yeah. Your dinner. So I mean, I mean I'll was, warn them first. Be like, listen, guys. And and it's just apparently now the video I saw looked like there was more than two turkeys causing problems, but they say it was just two wild ones. And I guess the leaders of the gang. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the president and vice president of the turkey club. Yeah, and uh, uh, don't say turkey club because it makes them think sandwich and they get even more angry. That's why they're so mad. They're yeah. taking the power back. Yeah. Yeah. They, don't, they don't want that at all. Uh, yeah, this is. Um, well, this is uh, this is this is a hell of a situation right here. I mean, uh, I don't this know what why to I'm do. glad we live here in Washington. We don't have wild turkeys that I know. Of. So they don't belong to anybody, as no. far as we know. No, yeah, right. they're wild, so feral. I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, you can't own me. <laughs> I, you know, it's an interesting thing because on, on Mercer Island, a lot of people have been up in arms about coyotes that are on the island. And, you know, they're, you know, I guess a couple of coyotes might have, you know, gone after some people's pets. I don't know. Oh, I, that, I, I haven't yeah. been there, but it's, been, I mean, it's I've been all over next stories. door. Yeah. Yeah. All over next door. And, uh, you know, you, you got some people that are on the side of the coyotes. I never thought this would be the case, but there are humans that are backing non humans in this story. Dude. So do you think there are wild turkey proponents going, you know what? F your mail. I'm with the turkey. Oh, oh, for sure. Absolutely. It's happening in Lily's town, actually. It oh, really? Sits, yeah. Wild she, turkeys? Yeah, she called me and there was like a whole gang of turkeys hanging out in her front yard. A oh, gang of turkeys. Yeah, yeah. and like Whoa. her dogs were freaking out. And she's like, yeah, but we can't we can't hurt the turkeys. We have to let them live their lives. And well, it's like, turkeys of anarchy, apparently, in Massachusetts. Apparently, well, wow. that's right above Con Connecticut. So. Yeah, it's New England. So apparently, New England turkeys are good. They're all banding together. You can see this happening. Now, they might say they're peaceful, and they might be gathering their turkey troops, you know, and right near turkey where humans troops. are, saying everything is fine. And next thing you know, this happens. And they're scary, too. Like, they'll yeah. chase you. Well, chickens are the same way. I know I'm everyone. I'm slow. I'm <laughs> That's why I gotta stay away from these turkeys. Hey, wait, wait, wait. What'd you say about chickens? Because yeah, people think chickens are you know chicken scaredy cats, but they they'll they'll fight you. Oh, chickens yeah. can get real mean. Super wait, aggressive. Wait, 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 wait. So you think then Taryn is 
all these years is raising an army? Yes. It's not yes. like, oh. Yeah. You mean t- Taryn's going to overthrow the world where there yes. are chickens of death? And her goats. Yeah. Uh, oh, the go- well, we know about goats. I mean, that's I, I always wondered, because goats, to me, are like, they're ready to go. They're, oh, yeah. I mean, they're ready to goat you. They're the goat you in anything. Yeah, they'll try to ram you. Yeah. They goat you. They ram you. I mean, everything about a goat is aggressive. Well, that's why Taryn that. calls herself the gobble gobble queen. Yeah. I always wondered what that. Oh, meant. is that why? <laughs> yeah, I always thought it was weird. I didn't know if that was like a you know yeah, uh, yeah. a wazoo thing from her college days, <laughs> yeah. but now I get it. Okay, now we know why. All right, uh, so that. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> wow! Even though I mean, chickens are gobble. Well, you know, look, chickens are learning from the turkeys, and now they're they got gobble grenades. Apparently, that's gobble what they grenades. Are. And uh, uh, Steve, I uh, would like to let you know that there are wild turkeys in Washington State. What about parole? Um, so, well, you know, so we're not wow. quite safe yet. It doesn't say wow. that they're necessarily in uh, Pierce County. But all around, so just be uh, careful well, how when about, you're going uh, on your trips. How about King County? Uh, any news, sir, about King County? Because uh, if the turkeys hear about what's going on in Connecticut, what if they get uppity and decide to start their own uprising here? Yeah, uppity, no. How no, high no, do uh, no uh, King or Pierce County? How high do you have to be to be in this conversation? Very. Very high. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not high enough, apparently. Uh, how high do turkeys fly? I think we're good. Tur- I don't think turkeys can fly, according they can, to the can, like, can, like, can, can they, like, propel, like, Do you like, remember jump? the, don't you remember the big, the <laughs> no, turkey like, drop episode that yeah. none of them could fly? <laughs> no, I know they can't fly fly, but I thought they could, like, go, and they kind of go up, like, you know, like, a few feet. Uh, wild turkeys I, can wow. fly, according they to LiveScience.com. Yeah, well, what's with WKRP, the old school radio well, episode? Well, it, it was a TV show, so. <laughs> uh, Nobody knows uh, if they're under the age of yeah. 40. They, oh. they they have to fly because they roost in trees at night, and some oh. say they can soar up to 55 miles per hour for short bursts. Oh, wow. forget about it. Right. I thought maybe I'm safe because my house, you know, we're fenced in. So I was like, okay, well, maybe we could kind of... But they can get over that fence. Oh, we got to stay friends with those crows because yeah. I feel like we need the crows to protect us from the turkeys. Then. Hell yeah, you need your cromies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the crow, the, the crows, though, I think have to stay neutral, don't they? Mm. This I mean, sounds like a premise to like a really bad Hanna-Barbera cartoon, and sure they would does. even turn down the idea. Like, wait, you want yeah. the turkeys to fight the crows? Yeah. Oh, I see a turkey flying, but it's, oh, there it goes. It's lifting off. Oh, yeah. I can wow. Get All right. Oh, that can get over my fence. Yeah. yeah. That's not good. Mm-hmm. I got to build a bigger fence. You no, know, I'm Holy so crap. mad at I gotta TV. I got to build a really big fence. Yeah, that's going high. Wow. You need some, like, netting and roofing for your also, fence. Also, see, look, you want to roll your eyes when I asked I about turkeys flying. And here we have video proof that a turkey can fly really high. I'm embarrassed yeah. the television told me something that was a lie all those years ago. I'm very embarrassed. <laughs> well, maybe they weren't, they were, they weren't, the episode wasn't about wild turkeys, but like yeah. domesticated turkeys. I, I, oh, domesticated <laughs> turkeys maybe can't fly? All right. They, they yeah. did drop them from a helicopter. They didn't start flying. They were just uh, dropped. Yeah. They didn't have yeah. a chance to get their wings going. <laughs> yeah, Nobody I, knows what we're talking about. Well, no. it's a I TV show that dropped about. turkeys from a helicopter, basically, and they told us that they couldn't fly, but There's now we don't know. Old Wait, sitcom yeah. about a radio station. Yeah. WKRP. Watch in Cincinnati. <laughs> All right, there you go. Uh, five people. Oh, someone brought up a good point. The turkeys were frozen, though, on WKR. Well, if they were frozen, of course they can't fly. I don't. Yeah, no, it don't even. I, I can't talk to that. I mean, I think they. I don't some, know. I don't know. Either. I don't understand. They, they Obviously, frozen, frozen turkeys can't fly. And yeah, that would hurt a lot of, that would hurt a lot of people. I don't think that's how the episode went. No. Uh, I've never seen the episode. Yeah, well, you and above everybody. Yeah. I'm waiting for Danny to see it to tell me what happened. <laughs> I guess yeah. just me and BJ have seen it. Yeah. Well, we got another story we have to cover. Uh, there was a teacher that was suspended when a raunchy video on her phone was somehow airdropped to 200 of her students. Oh, oh boy. Steve's got the mix report for you at 620 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. If you're hearing an informative newscast right now, well, then you must not be listening to BJ and Migs. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is The Migs Report. 
Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks to Kia PR for giving us the major report. And today is a day to enjoy some tortilla chips and chili. Happy National Tortilla Chip and Chili Day. Yeah, it's a good day. Also, it's National Twin Peaks Day. So maybe you go to the restaurant and enjoy looking at some Twin Peaks. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, the yeah. restaurant. I was, was thinking that the, of the show. <laughs> was that the place in... Uh, I, I'd rather do the show than I think the... I, 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 do we have the bad experience in... Yeah, but that was in Atlanta. All right. It, mm-hmm. that, you know, every franchise is probably different. It if is. you've ever watched um, Undercover Boss, not every franchise is being run by the right people. So Atlanta, okay. price sucked. But Danny says that the Washington Twin Peaks, what is it, South Center Mall? South Center Mall. It's phenomenal. It's fantastic. And they have a really good happy hour. I'm just going to throw that out there. Wow, I, nice. haven't, I, I keep forgetting there's one down at South Center. Wow. Mm-hmm. Get with the program, BJ. You need to go. Well, <laughs> you know, Danny, maybe uh, next time we grab a lunch, maybe we just take a ride down to South Center. Take I'm, me I'm, to the I'm, burgers. Look at that. I'm just phasing there. everyone else out for you, just you and Danny to go so look at the rude. Twin Peaks. Well, nobody, none of you guys want to go to lunch with me, do you? <laughs> well, if it involves the girls at Twin Peaks, sure. <laughs> oh, I see. That's how it gets. That's how you, you okay. Well, all right then. Uh, all right, fine. you're all invited. I just, I just assume Danny's the only one that, and really, it was like his job. Like you got together with him in private and said, "Danny, look, someone's got to go to lunch with that idiot. It's you. <laughs> you're the new. You're the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> you're forever the new guy." Yeah, that's fine. Hey, you get to see some peaks. Let's go get the some twin, twin variety. Hey. I'm, I'm ready, Danny. You know what? And anybody wants to come, even though you don't like to have lunch with me, I will pretend you do, and it's not the girls you're looking at. Yeah, just see us at a different table. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's this is getting I'm better. And better. Yeah. We sat at a table together. When we went to get Indian food. Yeah, we did. I saw. I thought it was really difficult for you. I thought you really manned up and got it done. I was like, can you get us the longest table and see us at opposite ends? <laughs> I never saw somebody sweat so much in my life, and I thought it was, it was the food. And but I'm like, but none of this is really that spicy. Oh, he's like, like he ordered no spice to his chana uh, yeah. sog. What's yeah. going on here? Yeah. All right, let's cut on over to Ohio. Where I, dude, if this is legit. What an unfortunate set of circumstances for this teacher. So a teacher in Ohio for a high school has been suspended because, well, she had a sex tape or like a sex video of her being intimate on her phone. Oh, boy. And somehow it was airdropped to 200 of her students. Oh, my. Not just her students, the students at the at the school that she teaches at. Oh, no. I mean, and but she says, yeah, I did not send this to anybody. And they believe that maybe somebody hacked into her phone and then airdropped it to everybody at the school. Yeah, I don't even know how you can airdrop everybody like that at one time. I know, you know what I mean? So the, it, the whole process is really interesting to me. Well, here's a, a cyber a security expert by the name of Alex. And he's talking about how this, that this is actually something that could be done to somebody's phone. So if somebody were to have access to the unattended phone, it's fairly easy to capture someone's passcode. If somebody is, has bad intentions, the first thing they'll do when they get access to your phone is look at your pictures, you know, look to see if you have a private folder and, and see what's in there or look at text messages and look at the pictures there and, and try to find something. Now, how about that? So, I, wow. Ricky, I know you have a private photo album. You might want to be careful with that thing. Extra security. Extra security, yes. Hype it up. Two-factor verification. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. I, I, I just watched. You know, I just watched last night's episode of Pam and Tommy, and this is just oh, it's horrific for this teacher because uh, right. I mean, I mean cause, oh wow. And you know her argument. She, I'm sure she's like, guys, do you really think I just want to airdrop my sex tape to 200 students? Yeah, like, I just want to throw it out there for. Imagine being one of those students, and all of a sudden you're like, except this video. Okay, oh, that's Mrs. Johnson. Wait. <laughs> Mr. Johnson. Oh, yeah. dear. Uh, the great name he gave her, though. Well, that was the first thing that I thought of, BJ. Well, <laughs> some parents. Was. Some, you, know, you know what? If I got the, a video of somebody, I think that's the first thing I'd think of. I like one parent said, as a parent, it's appalling. It makes you feel like, yeah, a punch in the gut, especially when you have an authority figure and you're a role model around children. And okay, that comes this? According to the story, disgruntled dad, Ken Trump. Oh, okay. I'm sure he's disgruntled because he didn't get a copy of them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what? To lighten up, Francis. I mean, really. She, it's, it's clear it, she didn't mean it, and I know it sucks. But it's, and all it oh, is is just know. people having yeah. sex. Your kid is not yeah. going to be traumatized by that. There's crap going on in the news today that will traumatize your child. Well, over Ken that. continued to say, it doesn't matter how the video was shared. It shouldn't have been there and accessible to kids in any form in the first place. Uh, Apparently, Ken doesn't understand how technology works. We're in a different world, buddy.
And I'm saying this all in front of my wife so that she knows I'm very mad. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, you know what? You're right about you that, go. Steve. He's putting on a good show, isn't he? Uh, yeah. I would never want to see this video, but perhaps I should just to be sure I'm mad about the right thing. I need to see it to know how bad it was. I want to make sure my anger is justified. Where is that video? And not bad by naughty. I mean bad by bad, bad. Bad, bad. Yes. <laughs> I would never look at this unless I really thought it was important to protect my child so or something. So the other night, Eddie Vedder performed over at the uh, Benaroy Hall. There's another segment. guy who, I, you know what, uh, I'm mad about because he never sent me his sex tape. Well, at Benaroy, he airdropped his sex tape to everybody oh, there. Oh, it was I incredible. Was that part of the show? Was, well, yeah, that's tickets. not cool. I would have gone if I'd have known that. It's part of the VIP package. And oh, it was like oh, right yeah. before he busted into uh, Pearl Jam's wish list. He's like, I know you guys wish to see me naked. So here there you go. go. Well, I'm Eddie Vedder. He, you know, Eddie knows what I like. <laughs> well, apparently they did a bunch of covers, a bunch of uh, Pearl Jam songs as well. It sounds like it was just a rocking wait, wait. event. Event. Eddie did Pearl Jam songs? You know, honestly, I did not expect him to do any Pearl Jam fan songs. I just thought maybe he was like, that's my other thing. I'm Eddie Vedder. This is solo Eddie. I'm not going to cover my band. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's a, yeah. I get it. That's a strong possibility, actually. But that wasn't the case. He did, like, I think, Porch, uh, Wishlist, and a few other songs as well. And it sounded like it was a great concert. Uh, the other night, though, sadly, it happened on the same day that people found out about the passing of Screaming Trees frontman Mark Lanigan, who sadly passed away at the age of 57. Obviously, I knew the guy. I mean, you know, the Screaming Trees were rolling in the same circle as Pearl Jam and Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, and all those bands back in, like, the early 90s and so on. Uh, so at some point during the show, he did stop and talk about uh, the impact of uh, Mark Lanigan and, and brought up a part that was like, oh, yeah, you're right. We've lost a lot of great singers here in the Pacific Northwest. You know, there are a lot of, a lot of really great musicians. Some, some people know Seattle because of the musicians that have, that have come out of the great Northwest. Some of those guys were, were one-of-a-kind singers, and Mark was certainly that. And, and with such a strong voice, it's hard to... Um, come to terms at least uh, at this point that um, uh, yeah but he's going to be deeply missed and he was getting pretty emotional as he went yeah. out and talked about it, which I got to imagine that's got to be a heavy thing think about like all the great iconic singers of the Pacific Northwest you have the Eddie Vedder, you have Lane Staley, who's no longer with us. You have Kurt Cobain, no longer with us. Mark Lanigan, now no longer with us. Andrew Wood, yeah. uh, uh, Chris Cornell, I think if I didn't bring him up already. I mean, there's, yeah. a, and there's a few others on, on I think the singer from Grunt Truck. I mean, it's like, it's, just, it's sad to hear and think about like how many great vocalists that were from here. Obviously, songwriters too, so you know that there's some heavy stuff in their world that they were singing about, but that, that are not with us. But Eddie is, is one of the few that still is. Yeah, it's 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 got to be tough to process people that you grew up with. Basically, you know, your formative years, those young years, yeah, your and, early twenties. Those are the guys you're hanging with. You just don't, and, and and very young. That's the other thing is you just don't expect somebody to pass away at the young at that young of age that Mark Lanigan did pass away. So it's tough, I think, for a lot of people. And you know, you just you feel your own mortality. Especially when it's somebody that you've been connected with. We're fans, but yeah. he knew the dude, and right. it was a, he was a friend. And, yeah, that's, that's oh, man. Uh, and to have to then go on stage. That had to have been tough. And make a statement about it, because that's your job. Did people expect that of you? Whereas, like you said, you know, he made a statement like, you know, uh, the best I can do with it now. Or something like he's just processing it all. And, you know, this is how I'm at right now. But, I mean, who knows tomorrow what I'll be like. It's yeah, I mean, hats off to Eddie. It's not, that's not easy. I know one. Of, I had a bootleg of it. I think it was in Boston that they were performing many, many, many years ago. It was right after Kurt passed away, and you know that was an, uh, sadly he has experience in going in front of a large crowd to talk about someone truly talented that he knew that's no longer around, and it was a very heavy video to watch. It's probably out there on like those bootleg things on YouTube. But at the time, back in the day, I was on VHS. I remember watching the the hell out of that video but it was a, such a great performance but you could tell it's because of the they were channeling a lot of um, sadness and energy and, and, and trying to put it into their art and, and just trying to like celebrate the music at that time uh, Kraken tonight yeah so you got a team that's on a two game winning streak taking on a team with a five game losing streak any Yay! guesses on which one has the losing streak mm, <laughs> yeah. ding 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 you're right Oh, wait, it's the that? Seattle Kraken <laughs> <laughs> oh Man, for a minute, I thought it was the Boston Bruins. Are you sure? No, I'm taking on the Boston Bruins at Climate Pledge Arena. If by chance you see uh, someone who looks like myself and, and Danny V, it's a very good chance it's us because we're going in the game tonight. Nice. Or at least we plan on going to the game. Yeah, yeah. we're going and we're going to make Boston lose. Did you tell your buddy John Forslund so you get a shout-out? 
now. Yeah. Uh, I didn't, but you know what? We'll, we'll work on getting on the where I root. Oh, yeah, you know. why not? I mean, maybe John has some poll. We'll see. Or maybe he does have some poll and says, don't put those idiots on there. And it's Kraken Thursday. I don't know if you guys noticed. Got myself a new Kraken shirt, Woo! baby. Oh, Ooh, I didn't know that. Oh, oh, that's wow. fancy one. Yachty Gord player card wow. on a shirt. A Walmart special. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome, actually. $20. I love that shirt, actually. Oh, really? Wow. That's, Walmart has those? Dude, Walmart's got actually a bunch of ladies cracking stuff and dude cracking. I, I mean, I was with my wife, so one purchase only because that would have been a bad financial decision in front of her. But I, but I wanted to get like three different shirts. Nice. So now you got to go to Walmart two more times and <laughs> well, her hopefully she well, forgets we, you got one. We've learned that the Walmart, at least the one I think it was in Bonnie Lake we went to, man, they just dominate when it comes to the children's toy section. You know, we were, I know it sounds silly, but we don't have a Toys R Us. And as a new parent... That sucks. Because, yeah. like, oh, yeah. you don't have a place. To, I mean, Target's got an okay toy section. There's all these random, like, trendy hipster type toy stores. And it's like, okay, I don't want those. I want, like, your old school toys. Like, I want to walk around, like, aisles and aisles and aisles. Man, Walmart's got it going on. I think that and Bonnie, they've got cracking shirts. Doesn't that Bonnie Lake, that, that's a huge Walmart, isn't it? It if is. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. You know, not all Walmarts are, uh, are as huge as that place. And I would imagine, yeah, that toy, no, those this toy one, aisles. Ooh. It's worth making the drive because the Puyallup one I don't ever want to walk into. To I'll honest. also put this out there. The Walmart toys are way cheaper than any of these. Oh, yeah. Toys. Every time I, I bought something for, at Target last year for Lily and I was like, saw the exact same toy for like $20 less. And I was like, why didn't I do that? Although I wasn't sure if the Walmart employees were just effing with us or whoever's in charge of like markdowns on the prices because there was a few, many things that were like, Price marked down. It says original price nine ninety nine. Markdown price nine ninety nine. Yeah. Oh, and I'm like, wow. am I See, missing that's something? A, that's a <laughs> Woo, sir, that's a big savings. You can't see that. Uh, no, I can't. But yeah, but uh, sh- shout out to uh, Rockaholic that said, hey, go to Walmart. They got a Yanni Gore t shirt, and nice. Yanni's my favorite player on the Kraken. So now I've got a Yanni Gore t shirt. Yeah, you do. Suck. Looks good. Yeah, yeah, it looks actually. Good. And I mean, and it's comfortable. Good. It's not like. Bad fabric or anything like that. <laughs> Soft. And the price good. is right. $20. Yeah, you can't. I mean, when was the last time you bought you got a, uh, an official t-shirt of anything for 20 I felt bucks. like I was stealing it. I, I, I ran <laughs> past the greeter because I was like, he's going to say something. Yeah, we're not sure you didn't, but let's we'll just keep that to ourselves. Well, it did feel that way because I decided not to get a bag. I was like, I'm saving the eight cents, man. I already saved enough money. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm walking out with a t-shirt in my hand and, dude, I feel like a criminal. Yeah. Like, I'm holding the receipt like, I swear I didn't steal this. <laughs> wow. And the guy's looking at me like, I don't really care. I'm just That's when you here. can tell someone's a noob at the whole bag thing and the no bag thing is when they got the receipt high in the air. I don't know. <laughs> Look at you know, it's like the Walmart guy goes, don't worry about it, Dillinger. You know what I mean? Bonnie and Clyde, we got you. <laughs> don't even dare try and tell me I'm stealing this. Yeah, don't worry about it. We we, 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 we got our eye on you, but we think you're safe. I'm a respectable individual. There you go. Well, maybe not. Hey, as far as weather, 41 degrees, going to be sunny today. That's the major report and that's what's up. Nice work, buddy. Thank you. Yesterday, uh, <laughs> Mr. Thief over there, he did get this one right. Which character did Josh Gad voice in Frozen? Oh, that's Tatum's guy. Uh, Olaf. Yes, Olaf. Olaf. <laughs> and I feel bad because I think my wife's driving with uh, Tatum right now. And if I said that, now Tatum's probably going to demand her Olaf toy. Oh, you oh. said it again. Uh, toy. And then, and then we replayed it again. So hopefully she's not driving right now. Because that, be, that would be a beating for you again all over. But, you know, hey. Uh, you want a shot at beating Steve, you got it. 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs. We'll do it at 650 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How do I know if bankruptcy is going to provide me with relief? What are the steps for my situation? Uh, there's so much information out there about bankruptcy with the internet and uh, what people have heard from friends and, and other people that they've talked to about their financial issues or, or bankruptcy. Uh, there's there's also a lot of bad information out there or, or urban legends about bankruptcy. In order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you need to talk to an attorney that's experienced in bankruptcy. So in order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you should talk to an experienced bankruptcy attorney and right my job is not to convince you to file bankruptcy my job is to help you to to make that decision and have all the facts uh, so that you can make an informed decision about whether bankruptcy makes sense for you what benefits it's going to have for you and what the downside of filing bankruptcy is thanks travis if you have more questions about bankruptcy you can reach out to travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com 
This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Take the next step toward the career you want, be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit UMGC.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. $20 million, $19 million, $6 million. These are all awards recovered for clients of Phillips Law Firm. To win big, you have to fight big. And Phillips Law has been fighting the too-big-to-fail insurance industry for decades. Not every case will have a multi-million dollar outcome, but Phillips Law will fight just as hard to recover the outcome you deserve. If you or a loved one has been injured in a car accident or on the job, call or click today at 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com.